hear you fine. We are hearing from Mullah Omar in the spiritual capital of, of Afghanistan, about 300 miles south of here. Mullah Omar is the spiritual leader of the Taliban here, and he's recently issued a short statement. In that statement, he criticizes the, what he called an act of terrorism, and he was very explicit. He said that Osama bin Laden was not responsible for it, and he said that all he wanted for his country was peace and peace for other countries in the world. And he went on to say that he believed Osama bin Laden could not have been responsible for such a complex act of terrorism. And he also said that if Afghanistan is a poor country, and therefore he believed there was no way that Afghanistan could be involved in such a complicated uh, act of terrorism. Judy? Nick, uh, help us understand who is more Omar, the gentleman you're quoting. He is the spiritual leader of the Taliban. The Taliban uh, run 95% of Afghanistan. They control the capital, Kabul. They control most of uh, Afghanistan, the south of Afghanistan. Mullah Omar lives in the south of Afghanistan in the spiritual capital, which is the ethnic area that he comes from, the Pashtun area around Kandahar. There are ministries of the Taliban here in Kabul. The foreign minister is here in Kabul at the moment. He is often based in Kandahar as well. And there are other ministry officials also based in Kabul. But the direction for Afghanistan, the direction for the ministries, the, the key decisions are all made in Kandahar, and Mullah Omar is the focal point of all those decisions. It is to him that a key group of ministers would go with a problem, with an issue, and it is he that would decide on any given issue. He is the final arbiter here of law and of justice. Judy? Nick, where is it believed that Osama bin Laden is in Afghanistan? That is a very difficult question to answer. Osama bin Laden, uh, his location is kept extremely secret. Uh, as foreign media traveling around Afghanistan, one is often watched uh, and an eye is kept on us by various ministries to ensure that we don't go searching around the country. Our movements around the country are generally restricted to main cities that are, are agreed in advance by the authorities. So it's very difficult to gauge where Osama bin Laden is. It is understood that he travels around at night. It's understood that he has operated out of various training camps that were built uh, to help train Mujahideen fighters to fight the Soviet occupation in the, in the 1980s. Those are based, some of them, towards the border with Pakistan in an area called Host. Those were the training camps that were hit, that were hit in the 1998 cruise missile attack on Afghanistan. It's also rumored that Osama bin Laden spends some time close to Kandahar, close to the spiritual leader of the Taliban, Mullah Omar. But to exactly put a fix on his location is a very, very difficult thing to do. He works by extreme secrecy. The very few journalists that are able, have been able to meet with him over the last few years are always held at a location and taken a blindfold uh, to another location where they can interview him. So people generally, when they meet him, they don't know exactly where they are. They wait there, he arrives, he departs, then they're free to leave. He lives by extreme secrecy here. Uh, All right, CNN's Nick Robertson joining us, as you could see, from Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, the country uh, run by the religious group, the Taliban, the group that is, has been suspected, believed for some time, of harboring Osama bin Laden. Thank you very much, Nick. And again, we apologize for the delay in the audio there. It is because Nick is on uh, this video phone, which uh, is, a, is a new device that we're using, and uh, there is always a delay, it can, tends to be a delay in audio. I want to bring in now uh, our national security correspondent, David Ensor. You're looking at pictures as I do this from New York City in the moments following the worst of today's attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City, Lower Manhattan, where you can see people running in sheer terror away from either one of the two airplane crashes into the top of the World Trade Center, both towers of which collapsed later on to the utter horror of people watching both live and on television across the United States and around the world. For that matter, New York City, the subject of the worst terrorism ever to strike the United States. So while we certainly mourn 
the loss here in Washington at the Pentagon, the airplane that crashed into the Pentagon, the other airplane that crashed near Pittsburgh, both of them commercial airliners with civilians on board, the loss of life in New York City is utterly unbelievable. And just picking up as we look at these pictures, picking up on what Nick Robertson was saying from Afghanistan, even as the leaders of the Taliban deny any role in this, an Arab, based, an Arab journalist based in London is quoted today to the Associated Press as saying that followers of Osama bin Laden warned three weeks ago they were going to carry out this sort of an attack. New York City Mayor Rudolph Giuliani joining us once again. Mayor, Mayor Giuliani. The tragedy that uh, we're all undergoing right now is something that we've had nightmares about but probably thought wouldn't happen. My heart goes out to all of the innocent victims of this horrible and vicious act of terrorism, acts of terrorism. And our focus now has to be on saving as many lives as possible. We have hundreds of police officers and firefighters who are engaging in rescue efforts in Lower Manhattan. I want to thank Governor Pataghi for the incredible cooperation and coordination and including uh, deploying the National Guard that will be available to relieve our police officers and firefighters and emergency workers in the next couple of hours. Uh, the governor and I just spoke to the President of the United States. The coordination with the federal government from the time of the first attack has been excellent, including closing off the airspace around Manhattan and doing everything that can possibly be done in the face of this barbaric act to make the city secure. And we will uh, strive now very hard to save as many people as possible and to send a message that the city of New York and the United States of America is much stronger than any group of barbaric terrorists, that our democracy, that our rule of law, that our strength and our willingness to defend ourselves will ultimately prevail. And I'd ask the people of New York City to do everything that they can to cooperate, not to be frightened, to go about their lives as normal, Everything is safe right now in the city, and the people who are doing the relief effort needs all, need all the help they can get. And then, uh, Governor, thank you, thank you very, very much for your assistance and your help and your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, for your leadership through this crisis. This is uh, a vicious attack upon New York. It's an attack upon America. It's an attack upon the whole concept of freedom and our way of life. Uh, and we cannot let these at attacks succeed. Uh, first step has to be to make sure we do everything in our power to protect the people and to save the lives of those who, whose lives are still at risk and to help those who have been injured. And I want to commend the mayor and I want to thank my colleagues from Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania and the federal government have all offered and made ready uh, support to help us uh, deal with this ongoing crisis. Uh, the people of New York are uh, not only the, the freest and most diverse people in the world, we're also, I believe, the most capable of rising to meet the challenges of this type of attack. And right now we want New Yorkers to uh, remain calm, to go about their business, to appreciate the fact that everything to provide for their safety is being done to appreciate that everything that can be done to provide for the health and the needs of the people who are still at risk is being done and that we will continue to work to make sure that we get through this uh, as strongly and quickly as possible. I want to thank the uh, federal administration. Secretary Thompson has been on the phone with me a number of times as well as the president uh, for what they are offering and prepared to do. Uh, and we're just uh, confident that, uh, uh, well, this is a horrible attack and one that uh, is despicable and uh, really unthinkable in its magnitude. We will get through this uh, and we will continue to have a great and free country, state and society. Do we know the number of casualties at this point, sir? I don't, I don't think we, we really want to speculate about that. The number of casualties will be more than any, any of us can bear ultimately. And I don't think we want to speculate on the number of casualties. The effort now has to be to save as many people as possible. And I don't think I don't think we will know the answer to that until sometime tomorrow or the next. Were there day. large numbers of firefighters? There are a large number of firefighters and police officers who are uh, in harm's way, and we don't know how, ma how many we've lost. But there's no doubt we've lost 
we've lost some firefighters and police officers. Do you know anything about the cause of the explosions that brought the two buildings down yet? Was it caused by the planes or by something else? We, be we, there a we believe we believe that it was caused by the after effects of the of the planes hitting the, the, the buildings. We don't we don't know of an additional explosion after that. We have no specific in information to that effect. Obviously, the city is now closed. The airspace around the city is closed, uh, and we are on heightened alert. But we have no specific information suggesting any further attack. Can you tell us where the planes came from? I think to give the people of New York confidence, to show that the federal government is standing with us, and and to uh, just to make certain that nothing further happens. This has been a very, very difficult and traumatic day for the people of the United States and the people of the city. And I think that it's, a, it's an act that shows that the federal government is going to do everything they can to support us and help us. Can you give us an idea of the extent of the, um, the rescue effort that's going on right now in Manhattan? The scope of this thing, of this operation? There, there are over 1,000 rescue workers, probably about 2,000 that are deployed, trying to get into the buildings, trying to find people, trying to search for people. The governor and I spoke a couple of hours ago. The governor has deployed the National Guard to relieve them because our, our people are going to need reinforcements pretty pretty soon. But right now they don't want to leave because they're searching they're searching for innocent citizens and they're searching for some of their some of their brothers and sisters. Are you finding survivors? Yes, they, we have um, we have some numbers that we can give you. We have 1,500 people at Liberty State Park who were evacuated, described as walking wounded. They were evacuated by ferry and other means. There are about 600 as of about 15 minutes ago in local hospitals that we account for, 600 people that are being treated in local hospitals. And there are 150 uh, in particular that were critical that were moved by EMS. New York City has 170 hospitals. So we have a lot of hospitals and we're utilizing all of them. Probably the one that was the hardest hit was St. Vincent's Hospital. And I would like to just single them out and commend them because as I was rushing down there after the first plane hit, and before the second, they were already deploying people on the street. I could see the doctors and nurses outside getting ready to receive people. And that was before the second plane actually hit the World Trade Center. What was, what was, what was your experience, experience, there? Was your experience down there? I, I also blood donations. We have several sites for blood donations. 153 East 53rd Street, 66 in Amsterdam, which is the Red Cross, and 310 East 67th Street. Uh, we, if people want to do something and they can donate blood, that, that's going to help not just today, but tomorrow and the next day. This, uh, this relief effort is going to take uh, some time. Mr. Well, Mayor, you were one of the first people down there. Can you describe the scene in your own words, what you saw down there? About I don't know that I'm really able to describe it. It was the most horrific scene I've ever seen in my whole life. Uh, we saw the, the uh, World Trade Center uh, in flames, a big gaping hole all the way on the top of it. We could see people jumping from the top of the building. Um, and then uh, we, we went into um, Barclay Street, 75 Barclay Street, I think it was, and we were there when the building collapsed, and it collapsed in part on 75 Barclay Street. So we were trapped in the building for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, trying to get out different exits. We finally went through a basement and came out 100 Park, Park Place. Did you ever fear being on safety, sir? Sure, yeah. What went through your mind? I don't think anything went through my mind other than uh, uh, making sure that we all remained calm and found an exit and just tried to figure out the most intelligent thing to do. Probably the same thing that went through the minds of uh, 10,000 other New Yorkers who uh, I could see on the streets. And I really have to commend them. If you really want to know what New Yorkers were all about, you just watch the way in which they handled themselves. They didn't panic. They moved deliberately. They moved swiftly. But they didn't hurt each other. They helped each other. I mean, these are just the most wonderful people in the world. Do we know anything about the composition of that dust that blanket slowly happens? Is there any asbestos or any hazardous material in that dust? Uh, 
I, uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. Mr. Mayor, I got reports of gas explosion related to this. Are you aware of that? So is a gas leak or possible? We don't believe that. We don't. We don't. We, do, we don't believe that's the case. No. Mr. Mayor, can Last you tell us anything about the, the, where the planes the come from, I, I, where the, the aircraft came from? Bill Diamond reminds me that. We